The unspeakable things that happened in Unit 731. Most of us believe we know the full extent of the horrors of World War II. The concentration camps, the gas chambers, the torture and the death marches. But what if I tell you there was a place where the atrocities were so horrific, so unspeakable, that even the Nazis couldn't match their level of cruelty? And it's not Auschwitz. Yep, you got it right. It's a top-secret Japanese facility, where the horrors of the Holocaust were overshadowed by an even deeper, darker chapter of human history. Hello, friends. Well, if you often fantasize about the past and really want to know about the history of ancient civilizations, then you're in the right place. Welcome to Unthinkable Past, a channel better known for dishing up the outlandish ancient traditions of all times. Well, the history of World War II is marked by countless stories of horror, atrocity, and the depths of human depravity. Among the tens of millions who lost their lives, some tales often remained untold. While the atrocities committed by Germany in the Holocaust against the Jews are well documented, other stories of inhumanity have received little attention. One of the lesser known but equally horrific tales is that of Unit 731. But what makes this story even more disturbing is the fact that it was hidden from the world for decades, leaving countless victims with no justice at all. Join us and brace yourself for a journey into the heart of darkness, as we are going to shed some light on this shady chapter in human history where the unthinkable happened and the truth got buried for decades. Getting started, World War II left over 100 million people devastated worldwide, and the Pacific Theater witnessed the longest period of active fighting. Japan may have initiated the war by attacking Manchuria in 1931, and undoubtedly declared war by invading China in 1937. These invasions caused massive upheaval and disturbance in China, leading to a civil war and famine that potentially claimed more lives than the current population of Canada and Australia combined. And the suffering lasted until the Soviet liberation in 1945. Amidst the atrocities that Imperial Japan unleashed upon the Chinese during this brutal occupation, none were as heinous as the actions of Unit 731, the Japanese biological warfare unit that plumbed new depths in the ongoing genocidal war. Let's see this Unit 731 thing from a bit closer. So, Unit 731, also known as the Imperial Japanese Army's Covert Biological and Chemical Warfare Division, conducted horrific human experiments on countless prisoners and villagers in Harbin, northeastern China, during the 1930s through the Second China-Japan War and until the end of World War II. The unit was officially named the Epidemic Prevention and Water Purification Department of the Kwantung Army. Reports indicate that Japan's biological warfare program began in the 1930s after the use of biological weapons was banned in the 1925 Geneva Convention. The Kwantung Army, which controlled large portions of China at that time, established its headquarters near the Pingfang District in Harbin and evicted around eight villages to build their facilities. One of the main reasons for selecting Harbin was the availability of test subjects. The notorious Unit 731 was led by General Shiro Ishii, a renowned combat medical officer. Despite its humble beginning as a research and public health agency, Unit 731 eventually got transformed into a facility where deadly diseases were weaponized on a massive scale. The research and development of these weapons were conducted through unimaginable and cruel human experiments on countless prisoners who were treated as nothing more than expendable test subjects. The experiments were so horrifying that they rank amongst the worst atrocities in human history. Let's now take a look at some of these atrocious experiments. Yoshimura Hisato, a physiologist at Unit 731, developed a disturbing fascination with hypothermia. As part of Maruta's experiments on limb injuries, Hisato subjected prisoners to freezing cold by submerging their limbs in ice-filled water until they were frozen solid, with a thick layer of ice covering the skin. Witnesses reported that the frozen limbs made a sound like a piece of wood when struck with a cane. Hisato then proceeded to test various methods for rapidly rewarming the frozen limbs, including dousing them with hot water, holding them near an open fire, or leaving them untreated overnight to see if the person's own blood could thaw them out. These horrific experiments were just a small part of the unspeakable atrocities committed by Unit 731. Moving on to Unit 731's terrifying weapons tests. The Japanese army was deeply invested in finding the most effective weapons, and Unit 731 was responsible for testing a variety of deadly tools. Their experiments often involved herding captives together on a firing range and subjecting them to multiple weapons, such as the Nambu 8mm pistol, rifles, machine guns, and even grenades. Doctors would then examine the wounds and penetration depths on the dead and dying prisoners. Other weapons, like bayonets, swords, and knives were also tested, but the victims were usually bound. Flamethrowers were tested on both exposed and covered skin, and gas chambers were set up to test nerve and blister agents. Unit 731 personnel even loaded human beings into large centrifuges to study the effects of high G-forces on pilots and falling paratroopers. These experiments involved spinning the centrifuge at higher and higher speeds until the subjects lost consciousness or died. While adults usually died around 10 or 15 Gs, 
Young children showed a lower tolerance for the acceleration forces. The cruel experiments didn't stop there. Victims were deprived of food and water to see how long they could survive without them. Some were allowed to drink only seawater, while others were injected with mismatched human or animal blood to study the clotting process. Prolonged X-ray exposure also caused severe burns and sterilized and killed thousands of research participants. For your information, let me tell you here that the concept of consent went out of the window with time, and so did the restraint of the researchers. It was around this time that Unit 731 began referring to confined research subjects as logs, or maruta in Japanese, rather than naming them appropriately. Anyway, let's now see the vivisection of conscious captives. Well, one particularly gruesome research method employed by Unit 731 was vivisection, which involved dissecting living human bodies without any form of anesthesia in order to observe how living systems operated. Thousands of Chinese communist captives, as well as children and elderly farmers, were used as test subjects. These prisoners were infected with deadly diseases, such as cholera and the plague, and then had their organs removed for examination before dying. The goal was to study the effects of the diseases without the decomposition that occurs after death. Unit 731 did perform other horrific experiments on their captives. For example, some subjects had their limbs amputated and reattached to the other side of their bodies, while others had their limbs crushed or frozen, or had their circulation cut off to observe the progression of gangrene. And when the prisoners' bodies had been all used up, they were typically shot or given lethal injection, though some may have even been buried alive. Tragically, none of the Chinese, Mongolian, Korean, or Russian captives assigned to Unit 731 survived their confinement. Then comes the syphilis experiment. Venereal or sexually transmitted diseases, particularly syphilis, have been a persistent problem for militaries throughout history, including the Japanese military. To better understand the symptoms and treatment of syphilis, doctors at Unit 731 intentionally infected victims with the disease and withheld treatment in order to observe its natural progression. Sometimes, a crude chemotherapy agent called Salvarsan was administered for months to study the side effects. In order to ensure that the disease was transmitted effectively, male victims with syphilis were forced to rape both male and female fellow captives, who were then closely monitored to observe the onset of the disease. If the initial exposure failed to result in infection, additional rapes were arranged until it took hold. Getting further with the rape and the forced pregnancy. Beyond just the syphilis experiments, rape became a common feature of Unit 731's experiments. As in, the researchers also subjected female captives of childbearing age to forced impregnation to conduct weapon and trauma experiments on them. These pregnant subjects were infected with various diseases, exposed to chemical weapons, and subjected to injuries such as crush injuries, bullet wounds, and shrapnel injuries. Afterward, they were surgically opened to study the effects on the fetuses. It appears that the goal was to apply the findings of these experiments to civilian medicine, but if any research papers were published by Unit 731's researchers, they apparently have not survived the war years. And finally, it's germ warfare. Well, Unit 731's objective was to develop weapons of mass destruction for use against the Chinese population, as well as American and Soviet forces, if necessary. The unit experimented on tens of thousands of captives in several facilities across Manchuria, which had been occupied by Imperial forces. The captives were infected with some of the deadliest diseases known to science, including bubonic, pneumonic plague, and typhus. To create the most lethal strains possible, doctors closely monitored patients for the rapid onset of symptoms and progression. Those who survived were shot, while those who quickly got sick were bled to death on the mortuary table, and their blood was used to infect other captives. To breed the plague bacillus to a lethal caliber, the last generation of infected captives were exposed to large numbers of fleas. The fleas were then packed in dust and sealed inside clay bomb cases. In October 940, Japanese bombers dropped these casings, each containing 30,000 fleas that had each sucked blood from a dying prisoner, over the Chinese village of Kozar. More than 2,000 civilians died of plague following this attack, and approximately 1,000 more died in nearby Yiwu after the disease was carried there by sick railway workers. The goal was to develop and deploy these weapons of mass destruction to decimate populations, and the horrific experiments carried out by Unit 731 were all in service of that objective. Towards the end of the war, Japan had planned to launch an attack on America by bombing them with fleas infected with deadly viruses, but they never had the opportunity. By August 1945, the Soviet army had invaded Manchuria and defeated the Japanese army, leading to the disbandment of Unit 731. And as the last surviving witnesses to this history grow old and pass away, it's a possibility that this matter may never be fully addressed. However, we must not forget America's shameful part here. Well. The top doctors and soldiers at Unit 731 had kept detailed records of their experiments and were granted immunity from prosecution for war crimes by the Allies after World War II. The US government wanted Unit 731's research for its own use, and kept the true nature of its activities hidden from public knowledge. 
Some of the truth came out anyhow in the Khabarovsk war crimes trial in 1949, but much of it remained classified by the US government. You know what's interesting here? Let me tell you. Some Japanese war criminals were also tried at the International Military Tribunal for the Far East, otherwise known as the Tokyo War Crimes Trial. Testimony from Ishii, gathered in Maryland after this post-war arrest, was used in the trial too, but Ishii, the architect behind the Unit 731 atrocities, was never charged. He died in Tokyo in 1959. A free man. What an irony. Well, there you have it. We hoped you liked this video. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe to this channel without any delays. Make sure you turn on post notifications and also let us know in the comment section about your views on these unspeakable atrocities of Unit 731. Thanks for watching Unthinkable Past. Until the next time we meet, continue learning and stay healthy. Goodbye.